Hello, this is Ms. Moore, and today during chemistry, we're going to talk about functional groups, specifically halocarbons. So today's essential questions. How do functional groups change a hydrocarbon? Hydrocarbon derivatives. Many organic compounds are hydrocarbons, meaning they contain only carbon and hydrogen. And these are the alkanes, alkenes, and alkynes that we've been talking about so far. But it turns out that many more organic compounds are actually what we call hydrocarbon derivatives, meaning they are compounds that contain carbon and hydrogen, but one or more of the hydrogens is replaced by other atoms or groups of atoms. Hydrocarbon derivatives are grouped into classes based on the presence of particular functional groups. And a functional group is an atom or group of atoms with characteristic structural and chemical features. We're, and we're going to talk about one of those functional groups today. So here we go, halocarbons. In a halocarbon, one or more Mm, that should be an M right there. One or more of the hydrogen atoms of a hydrocarbon is replaced by a halogen. Remember the halogens are the group 17 atoms, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine, like that. The boiling points are lower for halocarbons than for hydrocarbons. And remember, in general, organic compounds have relatively low boiling points, and they're even lower for halocarbons. Most halocarbons are not encountered in nature. Most halocarbons are man-made. And a few examples, we have 2-bromo-2-chloro-1-1-1-trifluoroethane is used as an anesthetic. And then hydrofluorocarbons, which you've probably heard about in like biology classes and stuff, the HFCs, are used as refrigerants in air conditioners, mostly in cars. All right. Let's name halocarbons. The first thing you do is name the hydrocarbon using the same rules you already know. You've done this. So you find the, the parent chain, you figure out, you count the carbons and use the, find the appropriate prefix, and then use ain, ein, ein as an ending. Um, count the carbons, find the branches. You guys know how to do that. All right. so. The next thing you're going to do is name the halogen as a prefix. That doesn't really work. How about name the halogen as a branch? Not as a prefix, as a branch. Give the location of the halogen as you would any other branch. And the way you change the name of the halogen is you drop the ending and add an O. So you would have like fluoro or chloro or bromo like that okay and then if you have more than one fluorine or chlorine or bromine prefix or um, sorry one fluorine chlorine or bromine branch use the prefixes di, tri, tetra, whatever. Okay let's try to name a halocarbon. First thing you do, just like naming an alkene, alkane, alkyne, is to find the parent chain, which is the longest continuous chain, which looks like it's this nice straight one right here. And it looks like we have one, two, three, four, five, six. Six carbons makes the parent chain prefix a hex, and it's all single bonds, so it's a hexane. Okay, next up is we need to, to number the carbons. And it looks like if we number left to right or right to left, we'll get the first branch on carbon number three. So I'm going to go ahead and number left to right. So we have carbon one, two, three, four, five, and six. We have two branches here. So let's name them. The first one is on carbon three. And he's chlorine, so we're going to change that to chloro. And this is a methyl on carbon-4. 
So now let's just put it all together. Alphabetical order. C comes before M. So we're going to have 3 chloro, 4 methyl, hexane. There you go. 3 chloro, 4 methyl, hexane. Okay, let's try one more. This time, why don't you hit pause, try to do it without me, and then hit play and see how you did. All right, so we need to find the longest chain, which looks like, again, it's across the middle, with two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven carbons, which gives us a hept. Looks like all single bonds, so it's heptane. And we got lots of branches here. We have that guy, and these, and this, and this. So numbering our carbons, again, it doesn't really matter if we go left to right or right to left, because either way, you end up with the first branch on carbon number two. Um, I'm in a number left to right, so we have one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. All right, so let's go about naming the branches. This guy here is a two, well, he's on carbon two, and with a one carbon branch, which makes him a methyl. This is a two carbon branch on carbon three, which makes him a three ethyl. This is a chlorine, which because it's a branch, we're gonna call it a chloro, and it's on carbon six, we have six chloro. And this guy is also 6-chloro. Uh, oh, chloro won't fit. Just believe me, that says chloro. All right, so now putting it all together, we need to look at alphabetical order. So it looks like the C's will come first. So we have 6, 6. There are two of them, and we don't want to call it 6-6-chloro-chloro. Chloro. It's 6 6 dichloro dash, uh, looks like meth ethyl comes next, three ethyl, dash, two methyl, hmm, heptane. There you go. That's how you name halocarbons. That's it for today. Have a good one.